Hi again. Uh, here we are in my studio, Hofstrasse 10, Hof Street number 10, 97070 Würzburg. You can check me out on my, uh, or you can send me an email, la.tromba.steuart at web, web dot de. La.tromba.stuart at web.de. That's how you can write me an email. It'll go in my spam filter, so don't write rude stuff, otherwise I won't listen to it anyway. But if you're nice and, and want to contact me, I'm always happy to uh, reply, and I'll take the time. Uh, we're now in my studio, and I'm talking a little bit uh, just after an interview with Bobby Langer for, uh, for the uh, um, magazine uh, Sonic, which is a, an instrument, ma instrumental magazine here in German-speaking Europe for Austria, Switzerland and Germany, and um, well, Bobby was asking me a little bit about Hindemith Sonata and uh, the characteristics of that specific piece, but before we get to that, since I haven't warmed up as usual, no time for stuff like that, I thought I would play a little bit of a nice piece from Rafael Mendez from his wonderful book. What does it say at the beginning of the book? What's it called? The Rafael Mendes Collection. That's it. The Rafael Mendes uh, Collection, and it's was printed by Carl Fisher. And uh, do you have a date on that? The beginning of the whole book. Inside. 1996. 1996. So this is an excellent book. He's got all kinds of things, and this is a piece that he wrote and and was printed by Carl Fisher in 1959. It's called Lullaby. So I've got water in the horn here. This is a wonderful instrument that was given to me by the man who actually made instruments for Rafael Mendez in California. His name is Zygmunt Kanstel. I met him in Frankfurt in 1997. And he said, I love the way you play. Actually, his son heard me playing on the stand. And he said, I'd like to give you seven instruments. And one of them was this flugelhorn, the best flugelhorn that I've ever played and that has ever been made. It's a copy of a French flugelhorn, but with a bigger bell, copper. And it's gold-plated, uh, 24 karat jeweler's gold. So it's about a, a warm a sound as you can make it. I put plates in it from copper also. It's really the cat's meow when you want to buy a flute. And these triggers were made handmade in Germany for it. There were no triggers this way before. Excellent by my instrument maker, Mr. Pogensee in Leinach. But uh, Dan, you have to be patient with me because I'm not warmed up, OK? So once again, your wonderful melody. Okay, look, I grew up with uh, Walt Disney and uh, Fantasia, and uh, his most famous and successful film was uh, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. And this is about lyrical, expressive playing. It has nothing to do with a strict tempo. Most people are brought up in music in this world to play marches or some crap or just a, 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 a I don't know, this is more like a waltz. Um, I'm sorry, music has got to be much more agogic, much more expressive. Every phrase has to tell a story. And so there is no rule. A phrase starts in a position and moves. And in the middle of the movement, in the middle of the phrase, it's had its most movement, and then it comes to a rest again. And then it moves again, and then goes through the fastest point in the middle, and then stops again. And it has a high point, crescendo and diminuendo. And sometimes, even a, a extra, a cellarando on retardando, that's the movement in itself, but not necessarily out of getting outside of the pulse itself. There's a pulse there. If you want to tell a story, you have to understand it has to be like when you're speaking. And as I said in an earlier uh, 
YouTube. If you talk like a computer, you are a computer. And that's not what people want to hear when it comes to music. Let's play the last chord before I come in, please. That's why I asked you to come by last night, so that you understand that this phrase is broken in two parts there, Dan, please. You know what I'm talking about right there? Dee, 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 dee. It's a wonderful, something very special there. Okay, I don't have any bar numbers, but you know where this, that, that bar is? Dee, dee, so do, si. Before that, counting one, two, three, four, five, the Auftakt into the, what the Germans could call a Dirkführung. Modulation. Once again, the right notes. Okay, slow music, easy music, lyrical music, this is the difficult stuff. Somebody that's always trying to play Flight of the Bumblebee or Horace Staccato or uh, Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto on the trumpet, like Malcolm McNabb thinks is wonderful, is, doesn't understand that the music is between the notes. You have to tell a story. Just like any phrase that you express music with is like any phrase you would speak. The meaning is between the words. The message is between the notes. The heart and the soul of the music is between the notes. It's the tension between the notes. It's the interaction with the, with the colleague. It's, it's the feeling about what that's about. So to, uh, to uh, express once more, this is a wonderful flugelhorn. It has a beautiful, deep mouthpiece. I changed a lot of things on it from the original from Mr. Cancel in California. This is a much more conical lead pipe. The mouthpiece is very much deeper, and uh, with the plates in it, it makes it much more substantive. It has heavy caps, which gives the instrument more, more weight, and uh, therefore it, it has more, yeah, substance. Okay. Can you play the morning part of the the intimate, the, the third one? I could, but I don't know if Danny's prepared it. Okay. But I will, uh, yeah, we have played it, haven't we? We played the whole Hintemann Sonata. 
So we're going to go now to the Hindemith Sonata because uh, uh, Bobby wants to hear this, even though I'm really not quite warmed up, but I think we're on the best way to it. And then I can talk a little bit about the German trumpet, the German trumpet, which is not a German trumpet at all. It's uh, in, the, in the United States, they always want to play Beethoven on the German rotary valve trumpet. Well, Beethoven never wrote for a rotary valve. He never wrote for the valve trumpet at all. He wrote for the natural trumpet because he never heard a, a, a valve instrument and he didn't trust it. It wasn't invented until he'd already written the Fifth Symphony, Sixth Symphony. And uh, he, because he wrote the Ninth Symphony also for the natural trumpet in 1827, even though the valve, these are Perronet uh, valves invented in France by the Mr. Perronet or Perronet. And these are rotary valves from Blumel or Stolzel and they're Austrian. Bohemian valves. This is a very good valve section made by a very, very good instrument maker here in Germany. His name's Bernhard Zierenbauer. It said Zieren, Zierenbauer. He lives uh, on the right on the cusp, right on the the, the border between Bavaria and Baden-Württemberg. He's a very, very strict for himself, pedantic would be a better word for it, instrument bower that makes the very, the very best valves. There's no knuckles here. You can see how well that's done. All my rotary valve trumpets, including the C trumpet here, are made with these same valves. It's an excellent bow. And I even took Siegmund Kanstel when he was in, uh, one time when he was over here at the Mesa. I was representing his instruments. And I took him in my Porsche all the way to Zierenbauer uh, by Gerrit Sried just to show him the factory. And he actually offered a job to uh, Mr. Uh, Sierenbauer in California. And Bernhard said, what the hell do I want to live in California for? I'm German. And I understand that. <laughs> 